As we are starting to build our forecasters toolbox, as we learn for uh, the simple methods that we can use for forecasting to at least be our benchmarks in a previous section of textbook, we need to start asking the question whether, uh, how well these methods do. Um, how well a method does has two aspects to it. The first aspect that we need to think about is how well this method uh, fits the data. And the second aspect of it is how well the method forecasts. Hence, in this section of the book, we look at uh, fitted values and residuals. Well, we defined as a fitted value, y t hat conditional t minus one, which is the expected value of a future observation y t, given everything, all the information up to the period before that, t minus one. So remember, let me just make this a little bit simpler. The forecast, our t step, our h step ahead forecast, um, out of sample was denoted like this, y t plus h conditional t. All the information up to period t, we forecast h steps ahead. We take the mean of that, that gives us the point forecast for that, um, uh, for that future uh, observation. The same thing we do here, but now we treat, we look at the sample from uh, Y1 up to YT. So we're looking at in sample. So our one step ahead in sample forecast, YT hat conditional on T minus one uh, is denoted like this. We call these fitted values for a good reason. And I'll explain that in the next slide. Sometimes as uh, to be brief, we actually drop the conditioning statement. We actually write YT uh, hat, and this defines uh, fitted values or in sample one step ahead forecasts, right? And we, we may use those interchangeably. So back to why we call these fitted values rather than forecasts. Well, often these are not true forecasts because many of the methods that we use to generate these, we actually estimate parameters using all the information in the data. So let me show you an example on the next slide. Consider this being our time series and we need to forecast this. Well, let's use the mean method to forecast. So we need to take an average of this. Our one step ahead forecast is this one. Our second step ahead forecast is this. Now our fitted values in sample also lie on the average. But to actually get these fitted values, we've used all the information. We've averaged Y1 to Y capital T, we've taken that average, and that gives us all these fitted values. So they're not really true forecasts. Let's consider forecasting using a naive. Well, my first fitted value I can get is for Y2. I cannot get a fitted value for Y1. Remember, the naive forecast is Yt plus one is equal to Yt, right? So my forecast is the last thing that I observed. So let's have a look at the forecast here. So my first step ahead forecast is the last observation. My second step ahead forecast is the last observation and so on. In sample, the first fitted value I can get is for the second value I see, y2, and y2 hat conditional on one, on conditional y1 is equal to y1 itself. y3 hat conditional on two is y2. Hence, these now are actual forecasts. I don't see anything about the future. I don't use the future to estimate anything. All I'm using exactly is information up to that point. Okay, once we get the fitted values, why are these useful for? Well, one of the reasons these are useful for is that we can use these to actually estimate our residuals. So residuals and forecasting are the difference between the observed value and its fitted value. Hence, ET residuals is equal to YT minus YT hat minus a fitted value. Now, it's useful to make some assumptions. If you know uh, your regression, you can relate these to um, these assumptions that we're going to make here back to the assumptions you make for a regression model. <clears throat> for two crucial assumptions that we're going to make here is that your residuals are uncorrelated. Okay, if they're not uncorrelated, that means there is information in the residuals and we haven't efficiently uh, modeled our data. We can improve our model. There's information we should be taking um, uh, on board uh, in terms of doing our forecasting. And that has implications on our prediction intervals and inference and so on, although we don't um, really deal with inference uh, in this book. 
The second assumption we make is that our residuals have mean zero. If they don't, then forecasts are biased by design and we need to adjust for this. This is usually by construction taken care of. Remember in a regression model, you have a constant, hence your, your sum of your residuals will equal to zero. If they are not, then add a constant or subtract that and make these uh, make sure that your residuals sum to zero. Two additional assumptions which will be useful to have um, is that our residuals have constant variance, hence they are homoscedastic, and also they are normally distributed. Now, these are not crucial to have, but they do make life easier in terms of pre in terms of generating uh, forecast intervals, for example, or other distribute or other calculations around distributions. Uh, if they are not true, we can deal with them and we can do various things to adjust for these. But if they are true, that makes life easier. So the two crucial assumptions is that are that our residuals are uncorrelated and have mean zero. And two useful properties is that they are homoscedastic and normally distributed. 